The great grassy plains are like a giant restaurant. There's food for everyone. In fact, the most prolific herds of large mammals come here to feed. In the Great Plains, there's food everywhere you look, although the menu varies depending on the season and rainfall. Many of the animals that feed on grass are of rather considerable size. Elephants, buffalo, bison, and hippopotamuses. This is the banquet hall of the giants. But such abundance, so many meals, and so much success don't mean this restaurant is open to the public. This is an exclusive restaurant. Only animals with extremely heavy duty, slow and patient digestive systems are allowed. Many just don't have the stomach for grasses and grains, and taking advantage of this abundance of food is no easy task, as most animals are simply unable to digest the cellulose or chew through the hard grains found in wheat. Poesei are a food source that is rich in carbohydrates, low in fat, and very high in fiber. This is a favorite food for athletes, animals that do a lot of moving around, or that travel great distances like cranes. Hippopotamuses are very big fans of fresh, delicious pasta. They truly live the good life. They spend most of their daily routine just relaxing in the water or in the mud, accompanied by other members of the exclusive Bon Vivant Club. Hippopotamuses need to take very good care of their skin, because despite how tough and gigantic they are, it's very delicate. They have to protect their skin from getting too dry under the sun, so they bathe every day in the calm waters of the river. Napping, bathing, and yawning. They can open their mouths up to an angle of 150 degrees. They while away the hottest hours of the day. The water also helps them keep their body temperature down. Except for when they're eating, they spend most of their lives in the water. But eventually, they feel the need to fill their giant stomachs, divided into three large chambers. They're impatient to leave the water, but they have to wait for the sun to set. Hippopotamuses are nocturnal. And in the dead of night, they leave the river carrying 1,500 kilos of body weight. They're the third largest land animal on the planet, after the elephant and the white rhinoceros. Despite their clumsy appearance, they're agile and fast on land and can travel almost eight kilometers every night to graze in their favorite pastures where short, tender grasses grow. They won't pass up on other plants, but their preference is for grasses. Fresh grass is their favorite dish, their main source of food. Each night they spend between four and five hours patiently grazing. They don't use their teeth to eat. They deftly maneuver the grass into their great mouths with their thick, 
sensitive lips. Little by little, bite by bite, they ingest about 70 kilos of fresh grass every night, consuming the equivalent of 5% of their body weight every day. Hippopotamuses don't chew their food, but they have a complex stomach with three segments, one of which has a massive amount of microorganisms that help them digest cellulose. The African elephant of the savanna is a record breaker. It's the largest land mammal, with an average weight of over five tons, although some individuals have weighed in at a tremendous 12 tons. It's frightening to think how much they eat every day. The Great Plains offer abundant food during the rainy season, but even so, they're used to marching great distances to fill their bellies. Their vast size and fast intestinal transit time means they spend three-fourths of their time eating or looking for food. Elephants are strict herbivores, but depending on the ecosystem where they live, which grasses, plants, and leaves are on the menu varies greatly. Whichever vegetables are on the menu, eating them requires special teeth and very strong jaw muscles to adequately crush and mash them. Elephants only have four molar teeth, two on the upper and two on the lower jaw, although they are of unusual size. They eventually wear out and get replaced. The first molars come out at 15 years of age, then at 30, then after 40, and finally at about 50 years old. When the last molars wear out and the elephant runs out of replacement teeth, it can no longer chew food and starves. Elephants eat around 150 kilos of plants each day, but their digestive system is not very efficient and they defecate the food half digested, which facilitates the dispersion of seeds of all kinds. They're big eaters and big drinkers, too. They like to accompany those 150 kilos of food per day with about 200 liters of water. Not every creature living on the grassy savanna lives on vegetable fibers. The warthog is a very common wild pig in the savanna because they have everything they need to live comfortably here. They seek refuge and privacy in the thick, tall grasses where it's impossible to find them. Up above the warthog's head, the weavers work hard on building a nest. There's more than one way to put these plants to use. Visibility is low in the tall grasses, 
but these warthogs have a powerful sense of smell that allows them to detect predators, their fellow warthogs, and a delicious meal. They truly eat, sleep, and spend their entire lives never having to leave the restaurant where they eat. Wild pigs are usually omnivores, but the warthog's diet is almost exclusively herbivorous. This pig is a connoisseur of fine herbs. While the warthog eats, the weaver keeps on building its nest. When the grasses are abundant, warthogs eat the most tender and delicious shoots almost exclusively. They very delicately tear off just the tips of the grasses with the help of their incisors and lips. They spend hours grazing, meanwhile shooting furtive glances to spot any predators. When they feel nice and calm, they kneel down, bending their front legs. This may seem like an odd way to enjoy your meal, but warthogs feel very comfortable bending down towards the ground to pick out the most succulent plants. They don't mind walking around on their knees while they meticulously trim the lawn. After a rainfall, with the savanna cool and well watered, grasses make up 95% of the warthog's diet. The fresh grass season coincides with the weaver's mating season, and they prefer to use the grass to put together a nice nest and attract the lady. When the grass is all gone, the warthogs use their snouts to dig up the ground in search of grass rhizomes and bulbs that during the dry season can make up around 85% of their daily diet. Herbivorous mammals are referred to as primary consumers, that is, animals that feed on plants. They transform shoots of grass or leaves into flesh, into big, hungry bodies. As far as secondary consumers, that is, carnivores like the jaguar are concerned, Herbivores are nothing more than steak with legs. Fortunately, herbivorous animals are always alert. They know they have to keep one eye open if they want to survive. The mother deer leads her fawns into the highest grasses where they're impossible to see. The field has another advantage. It's full of food. White-tailed deer native to the Americas are gourmet connoisseurs. They only eat the most tender plants, leaves, fruits, and mushrooms. Grass, rich in fiber, is one of their favorite food sources. Deer are ruminant mammals, like goats or cows, that are specialized in digesting the cellulose that makes up vegetable fiber. In order to take advantage of the cellulose, they have four stomachs that are capable of breaking up the vegetables 
into a nutritious form thanks to the symbiotic microorganisms stored in the muscular walls which stir and shake the food in order to aid digestion. Deer's digestion is a long and difficult process as they have to spend a lot of time chewing their food to grind it until it's small enough to later pass through their complex system of stomachs and intestines. But mammals aren't the only ones that eat grasses or their seeds. Birds are big fans of pasture as well. It's certainly noteworthy that the largest birds on the planet also feed on the expansive and grassy plains. Bustards are regulars on the Great Plains, where grains are abundant. They're the heaviest flying birds on the planet, and the fuel that keeps them going is the seeds and shoots of the different grasses. There are almost 12,000 species of plants in the Poesae family, which makes this the fourth largest family after Asteraceae or compound flowers, orchids and legumes. But in economic terms, it's one of the most important plants, as the human being's diet is largely made up of grains and cereals and their derivatives, like pasta and bread. These great bustards and many other birds also consume the seeds and shoots of wild grasses. Steppes and natural prairies are bustards' original habitat, but they have adapted to life on the artificial steppes, which are open tracts of land managed by humans with extensive grasses and widespread dry land crops, especially cereals. The males and females organize into separate groups throughout most of the year and wander through their territory in search of grains, shoots, and small animals such as insects, snails, and lizards. They don't like to sit down for a meal. They prefer to walk along, eating as they go, searching for shoots and seeds, and if they see a small animal, they'll eat that too. When mating season comes around in the spring, the males dress in their finest attire with tiger stripes and white mustaches and perform an exotic dance to attract females. The males compete for the females, showing off their fine feathers while they dance around emitting low frequency sounds. The most extravagant will be the most successful and have more female followers. Between dances, they eat as fast as they can to regain energy. The great plains full of cereals seem to be lacking in inhabitants, but they're not. They appear to be simple places, but their inhabitants are complex and numerous. Their inhabitants have many special talents, including the ability to feed on the hard fruits of the poesiae, the grains of wheat, barley or oats, and not just those, but fresh, green plants as well.
Among all small mammals, voles are the best adapted to grassy plains managed by humans for the purpose of extensive agriculture. Voles' natural habitat is found in patches of grassy vegetation or brush, but when their population grows, they are known to extend into just about any type of surrounding ecosystem. In natural conditions, their normal density is between 5 and 10 individuals per hectare. But at pest proportions, they can easily surpass 200 individuals. Their population multiplies until they form hordes of hundreds of millions of little gluttons in search of food. Then they turn into a hungry plague capable of destroying seeds, plants and roots with their tiny little teeth. There's almost no kind of plant material these little rodents aren't capable of eating, and they adapt to whatever harvest is on the menu each season. Eating grains of wheat isn't quite like eating hard pasta, like uncooked macaroni or spaghetti, but it's quite similar, except even harder. Voles incisors and molars continue to grow throughout their lifetime, and they have hard peaks that make it possible for them to gnaw through the hardest, most abrasive materials, like the seeds of wheat or rye. Without a doubt, they're connoisseurs of the hardest pasta. Animal species that feed on seeds as a significant portion of their diet are known as granivores. They're also commonly referred to as seed predators. Granivores can be found in many different families of vertebrates, especially mammals like voles, but also birds as is the case with cranes. Common cranes consume grains in abundance during the winter, although their diet is completely omnivorous. In Europe and other parts of the world, over the last few centuries, they've grown used to feeding in cultivated fields, as their natural habitats have disappeared. Their diet is quite varied, consisting mostly of grains, acorns, insects, and small vertebrates. But over the winter months, they focus on the grains of cereal that provide the energy they desperately need for their long journeys. Grains of cereal, much like pasta, are capable of providing over 370 calories per 100 grams as they are made up of almost 75% carbohydrates. That's why pasta is the most commonly used energy source among athletes. Cranes need to fly thousands of kilometers over the winter months, and they also like to use carbohydrates as a source of energy. It's like eating a nice bowl of macaroni, low fat, high fiber, and with plenty of calories to burn. 
The leftovers from the harvest become the main course for the cranes during the winter, as they patiently pick through the fields, gathering up each tasty grain of cereal they can find. Without a doubt, animals that eat pasta, like the cranes in the winter, are well fed and fully take advantage of an abundant source of very healthy food.